All right, beautiful people. Welcome to the channel. Welcome to the next episode in the Stitch and Glue Kayak series. We're going to be doing a couple of the finishing touches on the kayak this episode, and I'm going to bring you guys along. I hope you guys learn a lot, and let's have fun, and let's get into the episode. So a couple of the things we're going to focus on in this episode. One is building the combing. Now the combing is basically the part in the cockpit that your skirt attaches to. Your skirt is what keeps the water from getting into the boat. You need a ridge around the side, a lip that your skirt kind of goes under, and you need thigh braces, which are these two pieces right here. And when you're in the cockpit, you use these to lock your body into the boat. The combing is made up of three layers. So this bottom layer has two little fins that stick out and those are thigh braces. Now on top of those you have a ring and that ring sits on top of the combing. And so what I did to make this part is I used half inch plywood for this part and quarter inch plywood for the other two parts. So you can kind of see here how you have a base ring and then you have another smaller ring on top of that. Each of those layers gets glued together on top of the boat. When you are sitting in the boat, your skirt has an elastic band that goes around the outside of it and that elastic band gets strapped to this combing. Now what that does is it makes it so that water when it splashes up onto the boat doesn't get into the part where you sit. This is basically how the combing is made. In order to get the epoxy to stick, I'm going to sand uh, this just to scuff it up so that there's a rough surface so that I can get some good adhesion. So I'm trying to capture how I am mounting the combing and my phone has stopped recording probably four or five times uh, and the phone's basically overheated. So I'm going to put on the GoPro. I'll see if I can get the footage that way. Hopefully the phone will hold up. The temperature according to the phone is 104 degrees, which it might very well be in this shed, 144 degrees. Um, it's really hot. The other issue is that flies have been coming into the shed all day because the shed was cooler inside than it was outside and now that it's kind of cooling off outside the shed is trapping heat and the flies haven't figured out to leave yet so hopefully i will get through this without dying hopefully the phone will get through this without dying hopefully the gopro will capture whatever footage the phone doesn't capture and you guys will learn and hopefully the flies will bug off 
and hopefully you guys will learn how I make this combing. I'm going to start by scuffing the surface where the combing is going to sit. I'm using a 60 grit sandpaper and it loads up pretty quickly because I'm sanding resin. Now I'm going to mix up uh, some resin with some wood flour and I'll use that to glue the base to the boat. So I'll start out with three ounces total. So two ounces of resin and one ounce of hardener. So this is not finalized. There's still some stuff that I need to do, but you can see that it is pretty clean. So what I did, if you look at the other side, is I took the jigsaw and I cut around uh, the edges where there's extra material kind of sticking up. So I cut around here where there's extra material sticking out. And then I used an angle grinder with a flap disc. So basically it's just a bunch of sandpaper. And I ground off the inside edge here and made it nice and square so that it matches up pretty smoothly. Now the last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go over this with a roundover bit on the router and I'm going to round off both the top edge and the bottom edge of this. So I covered the combing in resin after shaping it and then last night I left the boat outside uh, and it seems like moisture kind of got into the resin on the side where I had sanded it which is why it kind of turned this weird color white. So I'm going to continue sanding the combing. I'm going to sand the whole thing down and then um, 
later on today, I will varnish the combing. Now that I've sanded it, I'm going to wipe down the entire combing with acetone to get rid of all the sawdust and stuff on it. Um, it feels really good. It looks terrible, but it feels good. And you know, maybe the way it feels should be more important. It is July 5th, and yesterday. Uh, my friend Stacy, her neighbors, set her yard on fire, shooting off fireworks. So, I am going to bring over some dirt from this pile right here that was a pile of topsoil when they put our house here. And then it turned into a giant blackberry bush, and then the wife got rid of it. So I'm going to get rid of this, or I'm going to take some of this. And I'll get some grass seed and uh, I'll spread it out over the burnt part of her lawn and hopefully that'll help. So we are here at Stacy Wharton's house and as you can see her lawn is on fire. What's funny is that we need rake at, at my house. We don't have one. <laughs> or that's not true. Mine is super cheap. And so like, I'll say, hey, we need a rake. And she'll go to like the recycling center and like pick one out of the, you know, the trash basically. <laughs> and then she's like, it still works. It's still perfectly fine. And I'm like, no. It, it won't. I have a really impractical car and it makes me happy that it's so impractical. Uh, it's nice that your neighbors apologized at least. Wait, the rest of them don't? The rest of them don't live here? For you. Um, so I think basically just water after this should should do it. Well, I don't have a hose, so I will go get one today. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where one is. I know where the water hook up over there. Oh, you should just go borrow their hose. Yeah, exactly. And then he spent like 30 minutes after. That's, you know, small things. Yeah. Now you might have a problem. I've used this stuff before. And basically you end up with like a super lush green part in your lawn. <laughs> yeah, I should have, oh, look at that. There's a bottle. There you go. No. We try, I don't know if we succeed. Really, I'm just trying to make up for a horrible childhood. Oh. <laughs> uh, so yeah, water and, water and good luck. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. See, I need to mount a hook here for the back strap to mount into. So I'm gonna drill a hole in the part back there for the hook to screw into. Oh. 
So here is the hook and I'm going to screw into that hole that I just made. It's not like I'm lifting the boat using that anyway. So now I can clip these two straps to there. Welcome to the future. So I wanted you guys to be able to see how the combing finished and how it ended up. And so you can see the lip around the edge, the thigh braces, and you can see how I, you know, you can hopefully see how I worked it smooth all the way around. Uh, this spot right here is really nice when you have it up on your shoulder. Um, and you're carrying the boat. Now, as for the seat, originally I had a board underneath the seat kind of lifting the whole seat up and I decided to get rid of that which lowers my center of gravity. Uh, so I just had this old cushion and um, I stitched that directly to the backboard or the back band and that way my center of gravity is really low even though the center of gravity is really low, your thighs still, you can press them up against the thigh braces, which is really nice. Gives you a nice locked in feel and helps with your stroke. And because the back deck of the boat is so low, you can still lean your body back on the deck when you need to for rolling and the like. All right, beautiful people, we're going to go ahead and end the episode there. Thank you so much for watching. Listen, if you're still watching, go ahead and click the subscribe button, and uh, I'll keep working hard to make great content, and all you have to do is check in and watch the episodes. Have a great rest of your day.